Hi, and welcome to Wrong Way. And yes, it's currently raining, which brings me perfectly to today's video, a video about a world's first on the Wrong Way channel, the Trigo. Let me tell you more about it. Wrong Way. So guys, today will be just a sneak peek, a bit of a history on the car company and other details on the car, but this will not yet be the full preview of, um, of this vehicle. It's raining. And on the same day, they had to show their cars on an event. So it was just a risk mitigation. Not that their cars aren't waterproof, because they are, but they're just very careful about their prototypes. And for sure in the future, we'll check it out more in depth. For this, you have to wait. You have to su subscribe and like the video. How many likes, Trigo? Um, should be on the video to let me drive the car. Okay. Smash the like button then. So, the Trigo is an amazing, amazing, amazing four-wheeler. I say four-wheeler because it's actually not registered as a car. Um, the Trigo is a heavy four-wheeler when it comes to the European legislation. So, um, you, you drive it with your regular car permission, but it doesn't have the restrictions of a car. So, I mean, there are so many things that are different on the Trigo than in comparison to other cars. Most importantly, in my opinion, is the retractable, extendable wheelbase. So, the Trigo can function in two modes. It can just drive um, extended, as you can see it right now, with 90 km per hour top speed with its uh, currently eight kilowatt motors, but this will change, the batteries will change as well. So I don't have all the specs right now because you know, it doesn't make any sense if they change it many times before they you know, release the car. And in its you know, retracted mode, it, it goes 25 kilometers an hour and it's actually just 87 or 89 centimeters wide. Even though on this channel, there isn't a lot of you know, um, cars that, that I present because, you know, obviously parking space, you know, cost, blah, 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 I know, traffic jams. The Trigo sort of bypasses all of the stuff because of its construction. So in its narrow state, you would skip through traffic and find parking spots and its wider state is for higher speeds and going through usual traffic. Your question is, what is the price? Okay. And th then I tell you that, uh, unfortunately, I can't sell it to you. Yeah. What we designed Trigo for is uh, mobility as a service. So uh, uh, we are actually not going to be selling them to the individuals. Uh, that is extremely difficult and very costly. And uh, for a company of our size, it would be super tough to be able to fulfill all the requirements of all the different tastes of different different customers. So uh, what we designed Trigo with deliberately is uh, automatic rental, automated rental, uh, like you uh, rent your... And we have rain. Yeah. So number one, it's re re retractable and extendable wheelbase. It's the first thing that is amazing about it. And the second thing that is amazing is that it actually does not turn with the front wheels. Well, it sort of does, but not like, like a old fashioned car, I guess, because it has actually a middle mounted pivot point, like, uh, you know, the Volvo Caterpillar diggers. Yeah, diggers. And because of that, it can actually turn in a radius of three meters. Yes, you heard it right, three meters. This is actually essentially the width of a car lane. Like this is the width of the street. This might be like now five meters could turn on half of that, which is absolutely amazing. So this is designed to be a killer city car. And even though, and, and, and obviously it uses way less parking space than a you know, wide car, but still it has the performance of a wide car because it has this 
extendable wheelbase. Hard drives. So this is the like two most obvious things I've learned about it today. But other than that, it's a drive by wire. So there is actually no connection to the front um, to the front or rear uh, wheels like you have again in an old fashioned car. It, it's operated by a computer and the actuation system. So essentially like it's like driving on a PlayStation joystick controller. You need the same amount of turning if you go slow to turn it on a dime as a usual turn when you go fast. But it's a um, tall car, so it's still comfortable. You're sitting like an SUV. It has place for space for two person, two people in, in a car. So um, it's actually really spacious. I was sitting in the rear seat. I didn't get any footage of that, but actually quite spacious. It's all glass. It has a roof like the Tesla Model X. It has one door on the side, which is actuated uh, which like, works like a you know automatic van door, which is pretty cool. And it's only on one side. And you would ask like, why does it have the door on one side? And the best answer was from Rafał, who said, "Well, how many doors do you use on your car to get out as a driver?" And fair point. I just use one. <laughs> so that's that it's fully electric uh, batteries will change over time now they're using actually pretty interesting a qs motor so quite similar motors uh, you can see on cyclone e-bike e-bikes these are motorcycle great motors vldc motors but the final uh, design i think they will use um, belt drive motors so you know it's essentially tw 25 kilograms per wheel at uh, the front axle, which is, you know, quite heavy, so they will change that. It's all-wheel drive now, but I think it will be rear-wheel drive at the final version. Well, and no, a lot of stuff is yet to be determined, so this is why more of an overview and a direction where they're going. It also has the removable batteries, battery capacity, you know, at least 100 kilometers should be, should be possible, but again, that's a thing to change. But yeah, I'll leave more of the stuff for the next review. There's a lot of thoughts, there's a lot of amazing technology and engineering, and engineering behind this Polish car. And these guys are, you know, truly, truly enthusiastic. So this is not a company that was just funded, no, oh, I want to build an electric car. Well, no, no. These guys started out small and now they're getting big. So it's totally legit and definitely a company that I would back. So that's pretty cool. So yeah, I guess these are my first thoughts on the Trigo. Now well, let's move on to the interview with, uh, with Rafa. Yeah, so it was raining outside, so we decided that uh, we would do something else and concentrate on history. And uh, what are the history is this. Uh, that is 2014 and 15, with the very first trials of uh, various approaches to the general structure of the, of the vehicle. Now this is our first ever, ever mock-up that uh, we built in order to persuade ourselves that uh, actually two people can fit inside that. The current state it, um, it is in is uh, a result of a party, the first party uh, after we, after we <laughs> raised some uh, money for development of the, of the vehicle. As you see, there was a lot of enthusiasm. And yes, we did prove ourselves that two people fit in it. Uh, actually. Uh, even uh, five people fit in it, uh, you can believe me. Uh, we have proofs, but I'm not, go I'm not going to show them. Now, uh, that uh, is uh, our very, very first uh, prototype that actually worked, that actually drove. Uh, and we have footage of my, at that time, uh, seven years old son uh, driving it. That was, uh, that was pretty nice to see something that uh, you conceived in your brain. Uh, actually working for the first for the first time. Uh, this here is uh, another mock-up uh, that, well, as you see, didn't survive. And this one here is our very important prototype, our test mule that we gave a lot of suffering to. Uh, 
It was turned over several times, uh, sometimes on purpose and sometimes totally accidentally. And it bears the beauty signs uh, resulting from, from that. It is also the first prototype to be electronically steered. So that's, that's the very, very first prototype of our drive-by-wire steering where you see uh, you do have uh, a sensor, actually a pair of sensors that sense the position of the steering wheel and the strength with which, the force with which the driver is pushing onto the steering wheel in order to steer. There is a computer that analyzes that. There is a network all over the vehicle. It's a CAN bus, so typical automotive solution for transmitting data. That network connects the computer at the steering wheel with the computer at the, uh, uh, at the central hinge. Uh, which is governing the uh, servo mechanism for directional steering. Actually, even this one here, uh, we, could have, uh, we could have remotely controlled. And with connecting uh, appropriate set of computers and sensors to this vehicle's uh, canvas, we would be able to make it autonomous, uh, which we didn't so far. Here's another mock-up. Uh, that is uh, a rough representation of what the vehicle was supposed to be looking like. That's uh, still 2017, like the blue one. Uh, we used to use this one uh, to show uh, how the ready product is going to be looking like in the future uh, uh, on various conferences and, uh, uh, and events. And this one here, uh, although it may seem to be very much like uh, the vehicle we stood next to uh, a second ago, uh, as it has practically the same body and, and everything, is actually very different. Uh, it has uh, two motors as opposed to the four motors the green one has. It uh, also obviously has uh, an upgraded version of the uh, drive-by-wire system. It's, it still has remains of the second door that we thought would be useful, which then it turned out they are not, uh, which is a good thing because that removed a lot of complications from the vehicle's design. Uh, it simply turned out that if you move the front, uh, uh, the driver's seat, if you move the front seat forwards, uh, then you have really more than enough space to jump into the rear seat. So the second door turned out to be uh, not needed. Other than that, uh, it's also a composite body like the green and the yellow one and the blue ones. Uh, as a technical difference, this one still has a steel frame inside it, whereas the uh, final versions uh, and also green and, 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 uh, and yellow, uh, they don't. So that's our 2018. Uh, as you can see, the difference between 2018 and 2017 is quite significant not to mention 2016 and 2014-15. So that's our museum, that's our, that's our history, and that's our heritage. You know, can a single person just buy a tree girl? It's a beautiful example of the club effect. Uh, we don't tend to go where people ask us to come. We tend to be interested in going to places where there is selection. Uh, and not everyone can enter. Uh, jokes apart, uh, Maybe at certain point this will be the case, uh, but uh, we just want to start from the lower hanging fruits and uh, uh, you must understand that in a situation when we can sell, uh, say, 200 trigos uh, to a single operator of the car sharing services, uh, it is easier for us than uh, selling to 200 individual uh, customers spread all over, for example, Europe. Uh, where, we ha where we would have to uh, secure the service, uh, warranty and everything, just like a regular uh, car manufacturer would. Uh, this is not yet the scale of operation we have. Uh, also, we want people to start using the vehicle without having to make the strategic decision whether I'm going to invest uh, significant amounts uh, uh, or I'm just willing to rent it and uh, cover the same cost as uh, I would cover anyhow with Uber or another car sharing uh, operation. With all the advantages uh, Trigo, uh, Trigo brings on top of what we would expect from, uh, uh, from the car sharing vehicle. Mm -hmm. So what are the plans for the future? Uh, we do the pilot. Uh, that pilot will take place on the break of 2020 and 2021. Uh, we will be traveling. That's going to be a grand tour mm -hmm. of Trigo uh, to various 
places, uh, we start from Europe. Uh, we will be showcasing the, uh, the vehicle. Uh, the vehicles will be present in the real life, real time uh, urban traffic. Uh, and then we swiftly move to the production, which uh, we are not going to do by ourselves. It's the 21st century, so we are going to contract production to someone who knows how to manufacture cars or scooters for that matter, uh, preferably here in Poland, uh, preferably here in uh, Europe. And then uh, the first fully commercial deployments, uh, they, uh, I hope, will take place in 2021. I wish everyone, especially everyone that I like, uh, to have an opportunity to be doing uh, what we are doing here, doing something totally uh, new, something that never existed before, something that uh, you came up with as an idea, and then you see it growing from uh, it being just an idea through infancy and many learnings uh, to the stages that uh, resemble more and more a final product uh, that happens to be, in our case, uh, a car, the first one that doesn't get stuck in traffic jams. And if you're still here, leave a like on the video, subscribe to see more content like this, definitely to subscribe to see uh, the video that we will soon release or make with Trigo, driving the Trigo and you know checking out the interior and whatnot so this will be a really cool fun episode to look on to so if you're still here leave a like on the video subscribe to see more content like this i'll see you in the next video see you soon and of course big thanks to my majestic patriots you are truly amazing